Guys, all the cars that you see in these videos are for sale on my website, www.woodsandbarclay.com. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the series on the 1984 300 TD. And today we're going to do the uh, AC compressor and dryer uh uh, recharge the system with R134 and get all that working good. So let's go ahead and dive in. We can also see uh, today I actually got in the new uh, ATE calipers for the rear of the car. That's going to be in a later video. That's the uh, original OEM caliper that would have come on the car, uh, come on the wagon. So we'll do that in a later video. But today um, I've got my gauge set out. Uh, but first, Let's raise up the vehicle and get this old compressor off of here. And then also we're going to remove uh, the headlight bezel. And right back behind here, we have uh, our old dryer. And we have some new switches also we're going to use. So let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing we're going to do is just loosen our belt tensioner nut. And this makes it easier to remove that old compressor. It's just a 10 millimeter nut right down there. All right, guys, removing the AC compressor, uh, you have three bolts uh, here, here, and right here. There's three on the back that hold it to the bracket. And that's what we have to uh, loosen up and detach from the compressor. There's one. All right, and then the third one, we have to get an angled a wrench. You know, we can do like that. A flexible head socket. That's the word I'm looking for. <clears throat> okay. Now we want to detach the manifold. Uh, I think that's a 15 or 16 millimeter. And then you have a bolt that goes through here. This is a support bracket. That's a 13 millimeter. Ah. All right. There it is. All right. I need to unplug the power cable from the compressor. There we go. And we got her out of here. Okay, I can see the reason this compressor was leaking uh, uh, and not holding a charge is because they had the wrong seal on here. Uh, this is a red seal and you're supposed to use the green seal. Wow, so I bet you that compressor was still good. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and install a new one. These guys were just using the wrong seal. Very common problem for or mistake for people, mechanics to make. All right. Let's get our new compressor in here. Okay, here we have our new compressor, our new receiver dryer, and our new high pressure and low pressure switches. And here's the seals. Now, what I was explaining a minute ago, see, with these compressors, you get uh, two different types of seals. The green one and the red one. And I can't tell you how many times I see mechanics install the red one because it's deceiving. You think you should use the red one instead of the green one, but you can see the green one is much thicker uh, because the matching one, the gold one, is uh, much thinner. And so people think they're supposed to use the thinner red one to go with the gold one, and that's incorrect. You just throw the red ones away. So we'll set these aside. <clears throat> now this compressor comes charged with three, or it comes filled with three ounces of oil. You want to drain that oil because you cannot install a compressor with oil and it. it'll pour out all over you. So we drain the oil and then we re-add uh, oil back into the system. So that's what we add back in there. Let's go ahead and drain out the two ounces. Okay, we actually got about three ounces on that one. Yeah, we got out more than normal on this one, so that's good. Yep. We got three ounces of oil out of that one. So we'll add three ounces back in uh, when we put it on the vehicle. Now what we also want to do is make sure the compressor rotates correctly. The instructions that come with compressors say to do it about 10 times. 
and I'll show you the tool that you do that with. So to rotate the compressor, we want to rotate it clockwise. And we put our little pegs in here like that. There we go. And we'll go ahead and do this about 10 times. That's what the instructions say. I don't know why 10 times, but it's probably to lubricate the seal inside there. So let's go ahead and get this compressor back up on the car and get our seals in there. Okay, I just want to get one bolt started to hold it in place. All right, that'll just hold it. Now let me go get our spacer. And we're going to get our top bolt in there. There we go. Boy, this one's going in easy, guys. Normally it's a little bit more of a struggle than that. All right, we got that top one started. Guys, this is my lucky day. Those, those three just went in so easy. All right, there we go. Now, we want to get our seals in there right here and then put our bolt through the back to hold our seals in there before we tighten everything down. The gold one and the green one. Now the green one you can slip over the end relatively easy and it'll stay in place. The gold one likes to fall out a few times before you actually get the bolt in. So let's see if we can get this one in there. And we're gonna snug it up later. Okay, that's good for now. Now we'll stick this bolt through the front. This is for our mounting bracket. There we go. That goes right there. This just gives the manifold some extra support. All right, now let's get our belt back on. On there. There we go. All right. Bam. Guys, that went on so easy. I think I just did that in, what, 10 minutes? Plug our power back in. All right, now we need to snug everything back up. So let me go ahead and do that. We'll lower the car and we'll recharge it. We have an adjustment nut right here. And it's very important that you get this tension on the belt uh, tight enough or the compressors will make a lot of noise. It'll sound like marbles in a uh, tin can. All right, that feels pretty close. Now let's go ahead and tighten up everything underneath. Okay, here we are on the passenger side of the car and I've already unscrewed the retaining screws on the back. And we're just gonna remove the passenger headlight assembly. And what that will allow us to do, let me unplug the, uh, here we go, let me plug the connector. What that will allow us to do is get access uh, behind it uh, to the receiver dryer. So to take this out, we have one, let's see, two, and then I got to take this out over here. And then there's two screws, one right here and one right there. All right, we'll just set this aside. And there, guys, is our receiver dryer. All right, so first we want to do is unplug the, this is the, let's see, high pressure switch that kicks on the fan in the front of the car. We'll undo that. All right, and then this is the low pressure switch here. We'll undo that. Okay, now we can go ahead and get a wrench on our fittings to uh, loosen our fittings and then screw out the receiver dryer. There we go, we got that one. Ah, there we go. So this goes to our condenser up front, and this one goes to our expansion valve under the dash. So we'll go ahead and unscrew both of those, and we're also gonna replace the O-rings. All right, we got both of those off. Now we can remove the receiver dryer just using a Eight millimeter. Let's see if I can get down there. There we go. There's two just sheet metal screws. There we 
go. And now we can pull out our old receiver dryer. All right, here's the oil I'm gonna put back in the system. I'm just, let me set that aside there. All right, here's the old receiver dryer. And here is our new receiver dryer. So we wanna go ahead and put back on our switches. So the top switch is gonna go uh, right here. So let's go ahead and get this off. There we go. And the second one we're going to get off is right here. That's for our low pressure. And I'm going to put a little compressor oil right on the O-ring. There we go. And we'll put that guy right back in here. Now, this is the switch from an actual 124 chassis instead of the 123 chassis. And we do that because it kicks on your condenser fan a little earlier and allows for better cooling. It just works much better. And put a little compressor oil on this O-ring. There we go. And this one screws. I think this is the uh, low pressure, so it turns off your compressor. It doesn't allow your compressor to engage if there's not enough Freon in the system or enough R134. All right, there we go. All right, now we want to get some replacement O-rings to put on the lines in the car. There you go. You can see our two. Uh, there's the line to the um, expansion valve. There's the line to the condenser. And we're just going to put on some new O-rings on those lines to seal into the uh, receiver dryer. There's one. There's two. Now let's get our receiver dryer and put it back in here right there. I'm going to loosely connect our, our lines. All right, good. Okay, good. Now let's reconnect our switches. Low pressure. And here is the high pressure. All right, guys, we have our new uh, receiver dryer and our new switches and our new seals. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down the fittings. You don't have to go crazy tight, guys. These have O-rings on them. The O-rings do the sealing. There we go. Make sure that one's on there. Clean up this reservoir a little bit. Some acetone. Acetone will take all that gunk off of there. There we go. Much better. All right. Like that doesn't really matter, guys, but that looks a lot better. All right, there we go, back together. Okay, guys, you can see I have the vacuum pump connected, and we have our AC manifold gauges here. So what we want to do, we're going to close our gauges. We'll turn on our vacuum pump, and we're going to put this under a vacuum. All right, and we're going to draw this down to negative 30 inches of mercury. You see it's slowly moving down there. We're going to suck all the air out of the system, and then we're going to seal this back up and let it sit for several hours. We're actually going to run it about 45 minutes to make sure there's no more moisture in the system from where we opened it up. And then we're going to put it under vacuum and let it sit for several hours and come back and check it to see if we have any leaks. If there's no leaks, the vacuum is gonna hold. So let's go ahead and suck this down to 30 uh, inches of mercury. Okay, we've been running for a while now and it looks like we're gonna get down to like, I don't know, it's like negative 28, 29. It's just shy 
Oh, let's see. There you go. Just shy of the negative 30 inches of mercury mark. Okay, here we are several hours later. And we can see. Yeah, right there. I'm not sure. It's it's hard to get an angle so you guys can see what the gauge reads. Because um, it looks a little different where I hold the camera. But we are right there where, sh where we left it. And uh, there is no vacuum leak. So that's good. Let's go ahead and get this thing charged up. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you a little trick. I have the high side plugged in. And now remember, there's a vacuum on the system. So with the car off, I went ahead and plugged in some refrigerant. And that vacuum is going to suck in the refrigerant into the system. So we're going to add a little refrigerant this way. This will drain this can out. And then we'll put a little oil in and let the vacuum suck it all in there. And then that will prevent that compressor from running without oil and without Freon uh, when we crank it up the first time. Now, guys, it's also very important that you never have a can connected to the high side when you crank your car. That pressure, several hundred PSI, will make that can explode. So do not ever do this with the car running. Okay, what we're going to do now is inject some of our oil through here. Again, using the vacuum. And we're just going to eject that oil into the high side. And we'll put two ounces in here before we uh, fire up the compressor. There we go. See the Freon is coming out. So that's purged. Now we want to crank the car and put the AC uh, AC on max, and then open up our valve. All right. Our Freon is going into the system. And we can see right now we're at about 75. PSI here, about 150 here. And we'll just let the Freon go into the system. And we'll show off our valves. There's two cans, and now I'm going to put in the rest of our oil. There we go. We're just going to push in another ounce. And there we go. Our refrigerant is going in. All right, our, you heard our auxiliary fan just kick on. That means our pressure switch is working correctly. Our Freon is going to the system. So our AC should be very cold at this point. We're going to test it in a second. Stuff is messy, guys. Let me go check our vents real quick. See what the temperature is. Oh yeah, ice cold. That AC is charged. All right, awesome. Let's go ahead and finish injecting our oil here and wrap this up. All right, got our thermometers in here. You can see our temp is dropping and AC is blowing ice cold. Very nice. And then uh, I'm gonna get the car up in the air and get my black light, just go check around for any leaks because we put some UV, uh, I think it's called UV dye. It's the green, green dye and it shows up under a black light. Um, so mission accomplished. We'll check for leaks, make sure everything looks good and we are done with the AC system. Now we just need to put our low pressure fitting back on here. And then I'll go under the car and put our high pressure fitting back on. All right, now I'm going to get some uh, low hanging fruit here. Uh, we got our new, um, these are the flexible transmission cooler lines. See the hard lines run right up here. And then you go to these flexible, flexible lines that run into the radiator. And I went ahead and uh, I've, I've got those in. 
So I want to go ahead and change these. And guys, this is very easy to do. There we go. Use a line wrench on there. And let's see if we can get this off. There we go. Crack that side loose. Now we don't want to completely undo it because transmission fluid will come out. We'll undo it when we have our, another line, our other line ready to install. All right, let's just detach that one from the radiator. There we go. You see, these replacement lines are wrapped in this steel coil, so it protects that rubber hose. That's why I like to change these. Uh, even though these originals weren't leaking, this will be some added, uh, you know, preventative maintenance. So let's go ahead and get that line out. All right, that's what's just pouring out of there. Now we'll get this one off. All right, now let's put our replacement on there. There we go. And up there. A little bit messy, guys, but that's okay. Let me get that one started. There we go. All right, we probably lost like, I don't know, half a cup. So we'll, we'll top off the transmission when we're done. Good thing is this transmission fluid is bright red. So I don't have to change that because that's fresh transmission fluid. Obviously the vehicle's already been serviced. All right, got one down. Go ahead and wipe it off up here. And we'll go do the other side. And that one is tight. All right. Mission accomplished. Clean up under here a little bit. And I'll show you what we spilled. So there we go. We spilled about, I don't know, maybe half a cup. But look how bright red that is. That is brand new fresh transmission fluid. And there's our old lines right there. And there is our nice new lines. Nice and protected with that braided cover. I just like to do that. All right, guys, I'm gonna lower this car back down and uh, we'll look for any leaks up top on the AC system. We'll look for our, uh, our die with our black light and then we'll be done with this video. So let me lower the car down. We have our new AC compressor, our new dryer, receiver dryer, our new high pressure switch, low pressure switch. Uh, we've put in our, our oil, compressor oil, and charged it with three cans of R134. And I've also changed those front flexible transmission lines. So stay tuned for the next video. Uh, we're gonna be doing, probably knock this out in one video, the rear brakes and all of the zinc dichromate plating in the engine compartment. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you next time.